The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Read by Alexander Scorvey. The fifth book of Moses, called Deuteronomy. Chapter 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tophel, and Laban and Hazeroth and Dizahab. There are eleven days' journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. And it came to pass in the fortieth year, in the eleventh month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spake unto the children of Israel according unto all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. After he had slain Sihon the king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon, and Og the king of Bashan, which dwelt at Astaroth in Edrei, on this side Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law, saying, The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you, and take your journey, and go to the mount of the Amorites, and unto all the places nigh thereunto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in, and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. The Lord your God hath multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are, and bless you as he hath promised you. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. And he answered me and said, The thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands and captains over hundreds and captains over fifties and captains over tens and officers among your tribes. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is with him. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time all the things which ye should do. And when we departed from Horeb, we went through all that great and terrible wilderness, which ye saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites, as the Lord our God commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said unto you, Ye are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth give unto us. Behold, the Lord thy God hath set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. And ye came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search us out the land, and bring us word again, by what way we must go up, and into what cities we shall come. And the saying pleased me well. And I took twelve men of you, one of a tribe. And they turned and went up into the mountain, and came unto the valley of Eshcol, and searched it out. And they took of the fruit of the land in their hands, and brought it down unto us, and brought us word again, and said, It is a good land which the Lord our God doth give us. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And ye murmured in your tents, and said, Because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt, to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. Then I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God which goeth before you, he shall fight for you, according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bare thee as a man doth bear his son in all the way that ye went until ye came into this place. Yet in this thing ye did not believe the Lord your God, who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in, in fire by night to show you by what way ye should go, and in a cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth 
and swear, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land, which I swear to give unto your fathers. Save Caleb the son of Jephunneh, he shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he hath trodden upon, and to his children, because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Also, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, saying, Thou also shalt not go in thither. But Joshua the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you, and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Then ye answered and said unto me, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight according to all that the Lord our God commanded us. And when ye had girded on every man his weapons of war, ye were ready to go up into the hill. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you lest ye be smitten before your enemies. So I spake unto you. And ye would not hear, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, and went presumptuously up into the hill. And the Amorites, which dwelt in that mountain, came out against you, and chased you as bees do, and destroyed you in Seir, even unto Hormah. And ye returned, and wept before the Lord. But the Lord would not hearken to your voice, nor give ear unto you. So ye abode in Kadesh many days, according unto the days that ye abode there. Chapter 8 And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven, about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer, and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood and many men died of the waters, because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe! Woe! Woe to the inhabitants of the earth! by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Good morning, everyone, and a happy Sabbath to each of you. God has been good in sparing our lives to see another Sabbath day, and we can certainly join with the hymn writer in saying, Welcome, delightful morn, thou day of sacred rest. May we be blessed as we fellowship with God and with each other in the house of God today. 
Today we are focusing on the message in one of our chapters for today. We're reading Revelation chapter 8 and verse 1 as a foundation text. The Bible says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Again, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. We cannot in these few minutes explore all the information in the Bible passages, but we will comment on at least one aspect of what is found in the passage. Today's message is entitled, The Trumpet Sounds. The Trumpet Sounds. Let us pray. Father, we stretch our hands to thee. No other help we know. If you withdraw yourself from us, whither shall we go we ask now that you will help us to understand your word for christ's sake amen revelation chapter 6 revelation chapter 6 portrays the opening of the first six of the seven seals revelation chapter 6 portrays the opening of the first six of the seven seals revelation chapter 7 interrupts the opening of the seals to show that God has a true people who will be able to stand through the terrors that have been portrayed in the previous chapter. Now, the vision in chapter 8 returns to the opening of the seals. The vision in chapter 8 returns to the opening of the seals. Six seals were open in Revelation chapter 6. Now, in Revelation chapter 8, the seventh seal is about to be opened. And so now, in Revelation chapter 8 and verse 1, the Bible says that when the angel opens the seventh seal, the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for half an hour. Some hold that this silence in heaven following upon the terrible events that take place on earth immediately preceding the second coming is caused by the heavenly hosts having left the celestial courts to accompany Christ to the earth. We say again, some say that the silence in heaven is caused by the heavenly hosts leaving heaven the celestial courts to accompany Christ to the earth. They draw this from Matthew chapter 25 and verse 31, which mentions that Christ will come with all the heavenly angels. And also, when the year-day principle is used, a day for a year, when the year-day principle is used, the silence of half an hour in heaven equals one week so then there was silence in heaven for one week because the angels have left heaven as some have interpreted to accompany christ to earth in revelation chapter 8 the seven angels blow their trumpets to announce the forthcoming judgments in revelation chapter Eight, as the seventh seal opens, seven angels prepare to blow their trumpets to announce their forthcoming divine judgments. Now, probation in the religious sense identifies the time when each human being has an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord as a response to their understanding of the gospel message. The end of probation represents the time when we can no longer accept the offer of salvation because of death or because the time to do so has passed. We say again, probation in the religious sense identifies the time when human beings have an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior as a response to their understanding of the gospel message. Probation ends, or the end of probation, represents the time when we can no longer accept the offer of salvation because of death or because the time to do so has passed. 
in verses 3 to 5 of Revelation chapter 8, the present probation and the end of probation are symbolized. In Revelation chapter 8 verses 3 to 5, the present probation that we have now and the end of probation in the future are symbolized. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 8 verses 3 and 4, the Bible says, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Now, the action of the angel in verses 3 and 4 symbolizes the fact that probation still lingers for us to make things right with God and man before Jesus comes. We see again the action of the angel putting incense in his censer. The action of the angel in verses 3 and 4 symbolizes the fact that probation still lingers for us to make things right with God and man before Jesus comes. The picture is that of the angel adding incense to the prayers of the saints as these prayers ascend to the throne of God. The scene portrayed is symbolic of the ministration of Christ for his people. The scene portrayed by the angel offering prayers with incense may be understood as symbolic of the ministration of Christ for his people. The Bible alludes to that in Romans 8, 34 and 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1. Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, as intercessor, mingles his merits with the prayers of the saints, which are thereby made acceptable with God. Jesus, my Bible commentator says, as intercessor, mingles his merits with the prayers of the saints which are thereby made acceptable to God. You remember Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 24 tells us, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, for us in our behalf. Now, in Revelation 8.5, there is a change. Revelation 8.5 says, And the angel took the censer, and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. This time, the angel does not have incense in his censer, but fire. This time, the angel does not have incense in his censer, but fire. The meaning of the act of the angel throwing away his censer is significant for the understanding of what follows as the trumpets are blown. According to the view that Seventh-day Adventists have favored, the cessation of the angel's ministry at the altar of incense, of the angel throwing away his censer, is symbolic of the end of the ministration of Christ for mankind. The close of probation. We say it again. The cessation of the angel's ministry at the altar, the angel throwing away his censer, is symbolic of the end of the ministration of Christ for mankind. The end of probation. No incense now. No prayers to God. No prayers from the saints. Everything has ended. There is no censor. The angel has thrown it away. Probation has come to an end. Friend of mine, before the flood, after Noah entered the ark, God shut him in and shut the ungodly out. But for seven days, the people, knowing not that their doom was fixed, continued their careless, pleasure-loving life and mocked the warnings of impending judgment. So says Jesus, shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In Matthew chapter 24 
and verse 39 Jesus says as it was in the days of Noah so shall also the coming of the son of man be oh friend of mine silently unnoticed as the midnight thief will come the decisive hour which marks the fixing of every man's destiny, the final withdrawal, the final withdrawal of mercy's offer to guilty man. O oh, friend of mine, when Jesus ceases to plead for the human race, for men and women, the cases of all are forever decided. Probation closes, Christ's intercessions cease, in heaven this time finally comes suddenly upon all and those who have neglected to purify their souls by obeying the truth through the power of the holy spirit are found sleeping when probation ends it will come suddenly unexpectedly at the time when we are least expecting it but through the power of jesus christ we can have a clean record in heaven today and know that god accepts us O oh, friend of mine, the words of God to the children of Israel through Moses applies to us today. We say again, the words of God to the children of Israel through Moses applies to us today. Jesus says in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live that both you and your children may live assuming that they accept christ as their lord and savior too again deuteronomy 30 and verse 19 i call heaven and earth to record this day that i have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life my friend that both you and your children may live oh friend of mine when the work of the investigative judgment closes the destiny of all will have been decided for life eternal life or death eternal death probation is ended a short time before the appearing of jesus christ in the clouds of heaven and when probation ceases jesus will say in the words of Revelation chapter 22 and verse 11, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Revelation 22 verse 12 now says, Jesus says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to as his work shall be O oh, friend of mine jesus says today behold i am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be O oh, friend of mine i challenge us today let us make haste to choose jesus and eternal life and live for him today and always and if you have accepted christ may god bless you and i challenge you to hold on to Jesus until he comes a second time. So whether probation closes today or next week or whenever, we shall be found holding and safe in the arms of Jesus. Oh, friend of mine, I challenge you today in the words of scripture, choose life that you may live, not just now, but throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity with Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Sabbath day. Thank you so much for reminding us that this is the hour of opportunity that we have to accept you as Lord and Savior and through the power of your Holy Spirit live for you until you come the second time. Be with us now as we worship you on this your Sabbath day, the seventh day, the Saturday, the Sabbath of creation. And may we sense your presence in a special way and may we feel refreshed at the end of this day Again, we place all the prayer requests in your hand and we ask that you will attend to each one and hover over each person who has made the prayer request and who has put aside the time to hear your word this morning. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.